Good morning. It is Monday, September 18, 2017. Paula English here. This is our Monday Mentor Call. And today our topic is defining and creating your target market. As we get started this morning, as usual, I've got a few questions for you. So if you've got uh, your paper or note paper handy or you're typing up on your screen, let's go through these questions and I'd like you to be thinking about your target market. So question number one, I'd like you to name two things, whether it's characteristics, values, shopping habits, whatever you can define two things your active customers have in common. So if you were to take that list of people who shop with you every month and you lined them up, can you name two things that they all have in common? All right, number two, <clears throat> give two examples that you've used up to this point to describe your ideal business partner. So whether you've written a letter, you've done an ad, you've done a presentation at a networking event, you've had coffee with somebody that you know, and you've talked about the expansion of your business, looking for a new business partner, what are two examples of words you've used to describe your ideal partner? You may have to think about it a little bit, but it's important to be very clear. So maybe just think about the last time you had a conversation with somebody about expanding your business. How did you describe your ideal business partner? Okay, number three. Up to this point, what percentage of your database meets your rules of engagement for most profitable, active, and ideal? So you look at all the names you have in your database, all the people that you have painstakingly entered into your contact management system. And you're looking at your goals, looking at your objectives, and you compare that with your database. What percentage of that database truly meets your rules of engagement for your most profitable? That means it's a customer using a full range of products on an ongoing regular basis. Active means referral sources who are regularly referring high quality people and ideal business partners, someone with experience who's ready to get started and make money right away. And a whole different question. If you stopped doing the business right now, for what other reason, you, you win, and maybe not win the lottery because that skews the question, but if things were exactly the way they are right now, but for whatever reason you'd have decided you're not going to do the business anymore, something else has come up, how much would you be ordering on an auto ship order from the company every month? Now that may take a little thinking and you may have to do some like figuring out of what products am I using just because and what products do I really feel that I have to have or I'm going to die. And the, it's part of getting into the mind of your consumer. So if you stop doing the business right now, how much would you be ordering on auto ship? every month. And we'll talk more about why that's so important later. 
because really, I have a funny feeling that people who are doing the business, who are huge consumers of the product, they aren't the same as consumers who are not doing the business. There is a, a very clear distinction. So just for the point of discussion, I'd like you to consider yourself just a customer. And how much would you budget? How would that be a priority in your financial budget? All right, anybody have any questions or need me to repeat any of those? Okay, so what we're going to do is review from the last couple of weeks for a minute. How are you doing setting projections? That was one of the things we talked about a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at activity logs. And my perspective was what I'd like to see you getting better at is projecting more projecting so that as you're looking at your results, the activity that you're doing, the money that you're making, does your current PV for this month reflect that activity? And this is really where I'd be more like your um, sales manager that if you were on a sales team and you had a sales manager and we were meeting on Monday morning and I would say, okay, Mary, let's see your schedule for the week. Let's see your projections for the week. How many appointments do you have scheduled? How many calls do you have scheduled? What are your plans for email marketing, social marketing, advertising, networking, Whatever it is that is a part of your plan of action, let's look at your schedule for the week and then let's put a dollar figure on that activity. Is there anyone who's really actively doing that right now? Yes or no? No, starting though. Okay, no, so considering it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this, you know, again, this is why I'm bringing it up every week because it's important. It's a very important part of how you operate each week with your business. Is you look ahead and say, "Okay, I have nothing scheduled. I'm going to wing it." Maybe tomorrow I'll call somebody or maybe I'll send out a couple of things or maybe I'll go to that meeting or whatever. It's a random, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, but I'll start later to figure it out. Well, so then the next question, does your current PV this month reflect that activity? Right? That seems to be connected. So, it sure does. <laughs> yeah. So that is why I keep revisiting this conversation. And I'm going to keep revisiting it because really I would love for each and every one of you to feel more and more confident that the activity series you're creating are tied directly into the projections you have for activity each week, that each of those activities are linked directly to an expected dollar figure income and then at the end of each week you go back and reflect and see how it works now sometimes it takes a while right if you um, I mean I I'm always thinking if I do this thing and I get this percentage of response and out of that response percentage of response, this number of people do the thing, then I can expect this much in earnings less the cost of doing the activity. So here's my net profit. So projecting 
and making the connections between your activity logs, your activity series, and your current PV. Those are very important. So even as we're moving forward in our 13 key elements, keep in mind that I'm not going to let that go. This is something we're going to keep talking about because I believe fully that as you get better and better at setting those projections and consistency and activity, you're going to start saying on Mondays, wow, Paula, that works. That's what I'm expecting. Then last week we talked about your, your brand being remarkable and intriguing and memorable. And I'm just curious if you've noticed any difference. As you are presenting your brand, your personal business name, your image, versus the company brand, not that that's a bad, I don't mean versus as in good versus bad, just as in activity, do you notice any difference in your audience reactions? And again, I know sometimes it's difficult to think on the spot to give me feedback right when we're talking about it, but I'm very curious if you think it makes a difference. I don't know. Sometimes it's, it, it may feel better to go under the company brand, and maybe sometimes it feels better to be under the umbrella of your own brand. Does anybody have any thoughts or comments about how that's made a difference? Well, that's good. So Pat is um, saying that she likes the reaction to her own business. I do too. You know, that's the fun part. And it's really nice to have that identity clear. I think sometimes our identities are fuzzy just in general and so if at least we can get our business identity really clear that feels great going out and making the investment in the activities we do. All right so as we re review those things and we've gotten to the point where we have we're getting on a routine of setting our activity logs, setting our projections, acknowledging how our business activity relates directly to our income. We have our brand. We're looking at ways to continue to be remarkable, intriguing, and memorable. Now we want to look at our target market. So when we ask the questions at the beginning, one of the questions was up to this point what percent of your database meets your rules of engagement so I'm just curious does anybody have any thoughts about that if you look at your database what percentage of your of your group your active group actually meets your rules of engagement any thoughts on that Has he ever even thought about that before? Yeah, not so much maybe. This is very common because oftentimes when we're looking at identifying a target market, one of the uh, pushbacks, if you will, is this worry that if I get too narrow, then I may lose somebody. That's one worry, right? If I if I say I want redheads with two kids, then I'm going to think, oh man, that's a, I, I can't limit myself. What about everybody else? The first step in really being bullish, if you will, positive about that target market, is believing that number one, it doesn't take that many. If you are of the mindset that you need thousands of people in order to generate your income, then you probably haven't gone through the 22 circles. You probably haven't worked out what is your most profitable and active and ideal. And so it's kind of this crapshoot that I better talk to anybody and everybody because I need anything and everything I can possibly get. In 
real professional marketing, the opposite of that is true. In professional marketing, we narrow our target market to be as specific as possible. So the person on the responding, that respond, they identify with the words. And so the more you use your words, that's why our topic is not only defining but creative. The more you use your words, the more they identify with your words, the more they become your ideal market. So let that sink in for just a second. The more you are consistent in describing your target market and the people who respond identify with that and you are consistent in using that language, the more those people become that ideal audience. Does that make sense? They're identifying more and more with what you say. I think if you subscribe to anything, if you subscribe to a magazine or to e-news or to anything where you have subscribed and said, I want to know more, like um, I love gardening stuff, right? So I get a lot of gardening things. Well, everything I get from these gardening magazines or e-news or whatever they are, they use language that I identify with. And the more they use that language, the more I identify with what they have to talk about, the more interested I am, the more frequently I open what they send, the more likely I am to buy from them. And they're conditioning me to be more and more like their ideal market. This is a very important concept. And I again, I, I'm going to take a leap and say probably nobody else is going to tell you this. So make a note in your own mind right now as you think about that ideal, the most profitable customer, someone using and consuming your full range of products, your active referral source, people who have access to that target market and are referring, and of course that ideal business partner, those people who are going to do the thing. Listen to the words you use to attract them, to cultivate them, and to breed that connectivity between the two of you. We'll talk about acknowledging similarities. Actually, December 4th is the schedule for that. And when we talk about acknowledging similarities, this is going to come up again. How your language and your identification with that target market and the similarities you have with that market breed the loyalty. The more your customers and partners and referral sources believe they have something in common with you, the more loyal they're likely to be. All right, let's take a little bit of a minute to talk about our marketing objectives. Positive versus negative. Now, this is a little bit of a pet peeve for me, so I'll step onto my soapbox here momentarily. Very often, when I see people doing marketing, they come from the negative point of view. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you sick of being fat? Are you whatever need to make a change? Or whatever the point of view is, even with the business partner, we may talk about people who are sick of their bosses or they need more money. This idea that we come from the negative and offer this solution 
again, this is just your Paula English point of view. So this is what I've experienced. Is if we start with the negative, that is where that person identifies themselves. They're sick, they're fat, they need to change, they're broke, they're sick of their boss, whatever's stressing them out. They're coming from a negative identification. So that's how you begin the relationship, is from a negative identification. Then you have to get them to change. You have to be the person to talk them in to changing into a healthy person or an ideal weight person or someone co committed to creating independent income or someone who is committed to success. And though it may sound very similar, in marketing it is distinctly different. So as we define our target market, we want to define the positive. We want to define those who already get it. Now sure, they may be having some health issues, but their value is health. They may be having some money issues, but their value is creating independent income. They may be overweight, but their value is to be at their ideal weight. They may be aging, but their value is doing it gracefully. So as you're creating language or talking to people or asking questions, I found that if you seek to pull out from them their highest and best and use those words to describe them, to define that audience and to reaffirm that with your audience, what you're doing is creating a more positive database. You're creating a more positive audience. So if I say, all right, how many of you are frustrated, you're broke, you're not making the money you want to make, whatever, you've lost track, you're not doing the thing, whatever is going on. If I start by describing that, then right away, the beginning of our conversation is really going to be kind of negative. Right, We're going to be thinking about these negative things maybe that bring us to the table. What I like to do is focus on the positive. Those of you who are smart, that you have got it, you've got that in your mind, you've obviously you're open-minded, you have the inkling to know that there's a better way, supporting the environment, supporting good health supporting independence and entrepreneurship. You're passionate. You're very likely to stick to it. Once you get it, once you're on the path, you're likely to stick to it. I don't talk to too many quitters. And that means you're committed. You're willing to do whatever it takes to make it happen. And that's what I do week after week as I come here and expect the best of you. Expect to bring out the best of you and ask for that of you. All right, so for those of you who have your new Five Steps book in front of you, let's go to page 49 and we're going to talk of just a minute about who are you. So we start our chapter in step two, defining your target market in your new workbook on page 47. And when you get to page 49, if you can all get there, you want to first start with the idea of identifying your most profitable customer so start with you. You must be your very 
best customer. People will do what you do. So remember when I asked earlier, if you weren't doing the business, next month, what would be your monthly product auto ship? That's pretty much what you can expect from your customer. Whatever is your level of commitment outside of the business, it has nothing to do with the business. It's your habit, your shopping choices. If you say, okay, this is what I would do every month with or without the business, then that's a reasonable expectation that you can have for your customer. And you can use it as an example. You can print out your monthly invoice and say, look, this is my commitment. This is what I do. I'm investing this in my health, in the environment, every month. So as you work through your workbook, you want to answer these questions on page 49 and 50 and 51, looking at who are you? What are your values? Why do you do what you do? And then use those words to describe your target market. And it's the same thing even with referral source. When was the last time you referred someone to someone and why did you do it? What was the trigger between the two, that sense of connectedness? So the better you know yourself, the better you know what you have to offer and who you are, the easier it is to describe that target market. Now, sometimes mm, there may be an interest. You know, we may have somebody that maybe themselves, they're not particularly athletic, but they have a real passion around sports. So maybe their target market is sports related. So again, it may not be, well, I'm a super athlete, so therefore I relate to super athletes. It may be I have a passion for athletes, and by the work that I do, my objective is supporting sports and athletes. So it doesn't always have to be exactly you, but it's very difficult to say, I don't buy the products, <clears throat> I don't do the business, I have zero engagement in what's going on, and yet I expect my customers and business partners to be ideal customers and to be ideal business partners. So there is some accountability as to who you are as you're working through your model. All right, so again, for those of you who have your workbook handy, these are important sections for you to complete so that you are clear in defining this target market. Um, any of these questions, fill them out, be honest, and review it once in a while. Sometimes things change. I'll tell you, I have very different objectives today than I did 20 years ago. Things change. Now, that doesn't mean my vision's changed, but the circumstances, resources, activities, sure, things change. So we review this frequently. That's why I always say your five steps model, your 13 key elements, those are not static. It's a moving target. So any time you feel stuck or you're not sure what to do next, we simply go back through our 13 key elements and review each one. And by doing that, you can always identify and overcome the obstacles that come up on a regular basis, just life on the planet. All right, so in summary, when we're looking at identifying that target market, we want to first of all, describe ourselves. 
So get really clear on who you are. Why do you buy? Why do you do the business? Why is it a fit for you? And then take that language and translate that into that ideal customer or referral source or business partner. Second is come from a positive. Describe values from a positive point of view rather than identifying negatives. For me, and again, this is just a Paula English thing, but I'm not attracted to the negative. That just doesn't do it for me. I am definitely, consistently more attracted to the positive. And I'm a pretty good customer. I'm loyal. I don't like to make change. When I find something I love, I do it forever. So that's, I think, a characteristic of people who are loyal is they're reinforced by positive rather than threatened by the negative. And the last piece in creating this target market is the consistency in your language. So the more you use the language to reflect the positive, that is like you, similar to you, the more you are impacting the character and nature of your database and they become more and more that most profitable, active, and ideal. By defining them and consistently supporting them, you are in fact creating it. It's a very powerful concept to embrace as you continue to invest your resources in the building and developing of your business. Next week, we're going to talk about resources. What do you have and why is it so important? We're also going to be talking about that value of your database and why that's such an important resource. When we were looking at our questions today and we talked about the percentage of your database that actually meets your rules of engagement, that's an important piece, and as we move forward in activity and the things we're going to do, we want to know that that database more and more closely reflects those positive values. Okay, so that's it for our little podcast part of the call today. I'm going to... Um, show you a few fun things just to see what your reaction is. Uh, let's see here. Paula? Yes, ma'am. Can I just a, a thought regarding your, your comment of coming from the positive. I have sometimes found also that when you come from the negative, sometimes even on a subconscious level, you are telling the person you're talking to that they have been wrong. Mm -hmm. And it sometimes puts people on the defensive for what they're currently doing, even though they wish it were different. Amen. I think that is absolutely spot on, Sue. And I'm sure that every one of us can think of an example where we have felt that way. Mm -hmm. And particularly when you're around the health freaks, which is nothing <laughs> personal, because that's, I mean, if I start talking about eating organic forever or recycling or anything where I'm passionate about those things, I have to be really careful because I can very easily sound judging about the other person that if you haven't been doing that, that somehow you're wrong. And that's an excellent point to bring up, a, a very, very important point, absolutely. So we can let 
that be in the past and what we look at is the present and what we want to create today which is all we've got and what we want to do in moving forward so that's an excellent point I'm sure everybody can kind of relate to that all right so I have a question for you when we're looking at right now on the screen I'm showing you our new comp plan design based on the new incentive program that um, Shackley has offered and there's the postcard and the rack card now this says specifically as independent reps our company pays us every time someone shops our online store with new bonuses and incentives we now earn even more money with daily payouts you can earn tomorrow on your sales efforts today are you experienced in sales and marketing and looking for a way to improve your financial equation our successful team of professional entrepreneurs can show you how who does that ask for salespeople salespeople so there's definitely an experience in sales and marketing yeah people that want to improve their financial equation they're that want want to work on it yep so they're looking to make something better that doesn't mean it's bad mm -hmm. but it means they want to make it better anything else entrepreneurs entrepreneurs yeah and to me there's a point there about what I would find attractive to that is that I have access to a successful team of professional entrepreneurs now that's to me that is very appealing yeah, independent but not alone that's right so this is one example of how the marketing tools ask for someone very specific okay here's another one so we have this one freedom means different things to different people for us it means things like being there when our kids get home from school planning for a secure retirement playing golf in the middle of the week and even just getting out of rush hour traffic we are a group of professional entrepreneurs working together to build income for now and for the future we are looking for others just like us who want to do the same okay so who does that ask for moms who have to go back and forth to school to pick up their kids and take them to games and all that other activity so a busy mom maybe yeah like you know they're or the other part of that maybe Mary is that they're not able to do those things hmm. they want to but they can't I mean I don't know if you've been to a kids sporting event lately but there are very few parents sitting in the bleachers a lot of them are taking turns taking the group you've right. got it this week I've got it next week <laughs> so it's it's kind of again it's a crazy life but it's about freedom it's about wanting more of the lifestyle that is ideally what we have in our mind I mean how many of you really started the business because you had some ideal of how you really wanted your life to be oh yeah I did I mean for me that was absolutely the driving force is I had the ideal of being independent and I was willing to do anything 
to stay independent. So again, we're looking for that audience of people who seek that freedom from oftentimes the rigidity of the rest of the world. Y'all are a pretty special bunch. And to be able to ask for people like that is really important. All right, so let's do one more. So again, this is one of those that I have a real mixed bag because, of course, the anti-aging word, all that anti-fighting, all the, you know, whatever, that's very common, very popular. Now, this one specifically says, so unless you're a sharp a puppy, wrinkles are not a sign of youth, which I think is kind of funny, myself. Are you concerned about aging beautifully? Are you looking for alternatives to injections and surgeries? Our products are for people who want to look younger naturally with the luxury and convenience of personal service and home delivery. So who's that asking for? How about starting with 40-year-olds and up? I would say maybe, yeah. I mean, again, if if, if there's an age thing there, that's an, an interesting insight. So maybe you really don't think about aging until you get to be 40, that's for sure. I got that from my daughter. <laughs> well, it is important because the language we use, we may not always know how our market responds to it until we ask. So I'm a big asker. I, I, I try stuff on everybody. This one was designed specifically because what I personally believe is the people with the money who spend their money on the surgeries and the all this other stuff that is available or maybe they have the money to do that but they're not doing it because they'd really rather do it naturally that's your most profitable customer if right now they're buying their products at the dime store we can't scare them into spending 10 times more money on stuff but if they're already investing in the super high-end products as they see the kinds of things that you have to offer that's really your target market because they have the money and they're already investing but they're looking for a more natural way to do it that's the key all right and the last um, just example this is our village people design and what were the objective of this one is number one to let your audience know that just because you have a clear target market it doesn't mean that everyone is exactly the same but the key component is management of our overall health objectives avoid risks that come with unhealthy weight unstable blood sugar this one specifically has some weight loss um, language in it but this particular design we actually have several different uh, copies to go with it whether it's recruiting and or whether it's for um, just your general product line the point is that these products are for they have a variety of circumstances but what they have in common is they want the more natural approach to what they're doing Does that make sense so again it's not that everybody looks exactly the same it's that who you are looking for has a key component that's in common all right so that's 
kind of it for the day. What I wanted to tell you is uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a little special with these uh, postcards, the wrinkles postcards. I have six packs of 50 of these cards that are just off the shelf, no customization on them. I have 50 packs or six packs of 50 postcards remaining. If you would like a pack of postcards, these are available today as our Monday special for $30 for 50 postcards. So this particular first six people or whoever wants as many as you want, $30 per 50 for the Wrinkles postcards. That's specifically our Monday special. They're normally a dollar a piece, so you can save some money if you would like those. Uh, again, you can email me directly. The second piece is that I have two combo packs of the comp plan. So it is 50 postcards and 50 rack cards, just like this. I have two of those remaining. $75 for 50 of each, 50 postcards, 50 rack cards. I have two of those available. First come, first serve if you would like those items. And the last one is I have one set of the Freedom postcard and rack card, 50 of each for $75. $75. So if you are interested in the Wrinkles card, the Freedom card, or the Compensation Plan, these are available off the rack. And again, I have some postcards available of the Wrinkles. I have one combo pack of the Freedom, and I have two combo packs of the Comp Plan. If you are interested in those, email me, Paula, at PaulaEnglish.com, and I will mail them out to you today. And the last thing is if you are interested in the new what do these people have in common postcard rack card, I'm going to meet with the printer tomorrow and it will be a more general nutrition card. So it's not going to be weight loss or skin care. It's more about people who want high quality, the convenience of online shopping and home delivery, but it's specifically narrowing that target market to those people who want those values. If you're interested in just kind of giving me a heads up that you would be interested in that design, I'm going to create combo packs of postcards and rack cards, custom. So these won't be off the shelf. These will be custom printed with your contact information, your logo, your return address, and just the special price this week for our brand new product order, 50 of each for 100 bucks, 100 of each for 175, and 200 of each for $300. You will get a final proof before we go to print to confirm that we have your information. But again, you need to email me today, paula at paulaenglish.com, to let me know if you are interested in either the postcards, the combo rack cards that are off the shelf, or the new uh, what do these people have in common design. And if you want custom print, you need to include your JPEG for your logo, your return address, or any contact information. So those are just our Monday specials. I love to keep things moving. We've had a lot of fun getting this stuff out there. If you are interested in any of these new designs, one, you can see them in your Five Steps book. And all of the designs are laid out there. And, um, and I can send you samples. If you go to our store at shop.paragonlivingus, you can see that in the store you can order the Five Steps Workbook, the 13 Key Elements Combo Pack, a recipe for conversation. We have our member library subscription, and we are still accepting applications for our scholarship program for the fall. 
So if you know someone who would benefit from access to our Five Steps classroom and would like to be uh, part of the scholarship program, just go to shop.paragonlivingus.com and they can register there.